the by the book method, if you like, uh, of changing the anti-roll bar bushes and the drop link bushes is to lower the, the front subframe and take the anti-roll bar off, replace bushes, put it all back together again. And that's quite a big job. I've had a look at this, um, it crawled underneath, and as I've got good access and, and a good range of tools, I think that um, I can probably do it without, but um, let's see how I get on. So here you can see the end um, link where it goes from the wishbone to the end of the um, anti-roll bar. And now looking at the anti-roll bar, okay, whoops, that's the steering rack, going through there and over the top of the steering rack you can just probably make out a couple of bolts there that bolt onto the top of the subframe. I'm pretty sure I can get that one from this side. Um, and the other one, absolutely no problem, I can, I can get out from underneath and may even be able to get them both out from underneath. The thing what I'm going to do is go around the other side, take that wheel off, take these two um, uh, drop I wish I knew the proper word for these, um, these two little drop arms off uh, and then that will free, the, um, free the anti rail bar and then I'll have a go at undoing the top mountings. I sprayed some WD-40 on the two um, nuts on the ends of the um, uh, on the ends of the drop link arm thing and uh, I'm just going to see if I can get it off with a ratchet spanner Ooh. that was a lot easier than I expected Okay, so that's off. Now to the top um, nut. Access to this is a bit less straightforward, so I've got a ring spanner. Ooh. Now that's slipping. So I'm going to have to resort to um, some other method. So working from the uh, the front of the car now. I've put a pair of mole grips on that um, uh, on that link bar, and um, and uh, I can now get a bit of purchase on the top. I think with a 12 mil spanner. So here we go. No, that's spinning on the mole grips. I don't think there's any point messing about with uh, trying to get this um, bolt off um, uh, with a spanner or whatever. So I've got my sabre saw here, air saw. I'll, um, I'll, I'll show that in a bit more detail in a second. I'm just going to cut the nut off. So um, I've managed to get all of that out. The, um, the drop link goes through there. and. Uh, I've cut through the top, took me quite a lot of uh, cutting and hammering to get that out. And uh, if you can see, there's, a, there's the remains, a load of bits. And uh, I'll just give this a quick clean over and then uh, time to go and tackle the other side. This is the reciprocated saw, sa sabre saw that I was using earlier on to, um, to cut the nuts off the, um, the drop arms on the, um, on the anti-rail bar. It's uh, a sort of mid-price one, I think. And... Uh, that was really quite effective, um, useful for um, quite a lot of jobs actually, well worth investing in if you've got a compressor. I'm underneath the car now, um, looking at the uh, roll bar to body mounting brackets and um, I think I can get these out. I've got a 12mm deep socket on a 3 8 drive so I've got a little bit of uh, manoeuvre there, a bit smaller to um, handle than the uh, usual half inch spider that I would use um, and uh, the camera is looking in through the driver's side wheel arch um, so what you're seeing uh, where is it that's the anti-roll bar coming round and the end of the steering rack on the driver's side 
So I'm going to see if I can undo this from under here. Well, that's the back one loosened. Good start. Right, front one. Kind of doing this by feel. It's not. Oh Christ! It's not that difficult. It's a bit, a bit tight, and I've got a car raised. The back wheels are on ramps, and the front wheels are on axle stands. Um, so I suppose it's about um, 500 off the deck from the from the chassis, um, and you need that much room to get underneath. Okay, well that's um, that's undone. I'm going to move on to the other side, loosen those off, and I'll come back and undo those. That's the passenger side loosened off then. So I'm going to go ahead and take these ones right out. That's the bolts out. Should now be just a case of lifting the bracket away. There it is. Just look at the orientation. Yeah, that looks like it'll go back either way around, so that's okay. The bar should be free now. Noting that the split in the rubber is at the front. And I should be able to just pull that out. And that's it. The anti-rail bar is now completely free. I don't know whether it's possible to feed it out through the end, it may well be. Um, that's not necessary for me. Uh, I'm just going to give it a wipe in situ and start reassembling it. So here are the horseshoe shaped brackets that hold the uh, body to anti-roll bar bushes. I'll give them a bit of clean. That comes all right. Here's the old bushes. A bit swelled up as you can see, that's taken on the, um, the form of the inside of this um, bracket. So compare that to a new one. Uh, you can see it's uh, it's got a bit fatter and um, misshapen. There are various conflicting opinions about whether you should um, grease the anti-roll bar mountings. Um, I think you should um, to stop any squeaks and rattles. Um, and obviously it has to be a grease that's compatible with rubber. So uh, using good old red uh, red grease like you would use on um, on brakes, and I'm just going to get a little bit of that. It's a bit difficult one-handed. Put a bit on the inside of that, and uh, I'll also put a little bit around the outside area there. But I uh, can't hold the camera and do that at once. But um, you kind of get the idea. Back underneath the car then, and I'm going to take my ready greased rubber, pop it onto the anti-roll bar. There it is. Just going to wiggle that into position. And then I'm going to put the. Oops, I've got that the wrong way around. That's it, the split to the front. And I'm going to put the horseshoe over the top. Hold it in place. bolts in, just a couple of turns to hold it while I line it up and put the other side in. The bodywork to anti-roll bar uh, mounting bushes and um, brackets are in place and they're all finger tight. I've also put the um, link arm in on the passenger side of the car. So I'm just going to drop the driver's side one in, <laughs> a bit more fiddly because of everything else being in place. So that drops in there. I've put a bit of red grease on this as well. Metal dishwasher goes in there. And a the rubber on top. And then there's a small, which I can't pick up because I've got grease on my fingers. <laughs> small washer goes on the top. And there'll be a nut on top of that. If I can compress it enough to get that on. Not there. Okay, same thing underneath. Same arrangement of washers and bushes. And then a nylock right on the bottom.
So now that both of those are mounted, I'm going to get hold of the anti-roll bar and I'm going to just going to give it a bit of a wiggle until it feels like it's sitting in the right place. That seems vertical there. I'm going to go around to the other side of the car. Bear with me. Yeah, that all looks like it's in the right place too. The last job to do while the car's on the axle stands is to tighten down the bolts um, on the um, anti-roll bar to body brackets. Um, so I'm just going to do that um, and once I've done that I'll be able to lower the car onto its wheels and uh, tighten up the nuts on the drop link arms at the ends. I've got the car back on the ground now and um, it's quite awkward to get to. Uh, I'm lying on my side and the camera is in front of the car. There you can see the uh, new link. i going to do the final tightening. The middle of the link bar has got a slot, or rather um, a couple of flats I should say, to fit a 13mm spanner. And uh, I can obviously put a 13mm spanner on the top. Oops, wrong way around. So I'm just going to tighten that down. Um, until the rubber compresses a little bit and then I'm going to stop and I think I'll call that good enough. And I've also tightened up the bottom nut um, until the um, rubber starts to compress. Um, and those two bits of thread sticking out at the ends are about the same length, so uh, I think that's a good starting point. I'm going to do the same with the other side, um, and then uh, I can always tighten this up further if, I'm, uh, if I don't think I've tightened it sufficiently. Well, that's the um, anti-roll bar job finished. Um, that's proved that you can do the bushes uh, in the middle and at the ends without, um, without taking the subframe off. Um, it's difficult to estimate how long that's taken me because I've uh, stopped and started a bit while I've been making the video and um, struggled with rusty uh, nuts and bolts etc. Um, but uh, I think all going well, that's probably a, a two hour job if you take it steady, um, including jacking up the car um, onto the axle stands. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this video, I hope you found it uh, useful and if you have please give it a thumbs up and please subscribe to my channel. Thanks very much, bye bye.